All right, so we're talking shit about Keith Garcia. So. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Todd Jarrett. Yeah. So Keith, uh, who uh, I have been competing with in the three-gun circuit for probably six or seven years now, and uh, he's extremely talented with a shotgun. I oh, mean, my gosh. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a magician with the shotgun. He is. He, well, he's a big enough to handle the recoil and big enough to handle everything that they right. can put into it. And, and so he's um, – uh, done some pretty amazing things. Um, I mean, he's a YouTube king with a shotgun, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, uh, as you guys noted that I just announced, uh, I'm with Todd Jarrett. Uh, the, uh, he's probably one of the, the country's, probably one of the world's best competition shooters, I would say. I'm sure you travel all over the world doing competitions. Well, let me see. I don't know how many times I've made a lap around this planet. But <laughs> it's uh, four or five, yeah, yeah probably. I, can, I, feel like, uh, I feel like Dale Earnhardt, you know, going around. But, yeah. I mean, you've got, you've got a, a long list of, of titles and accomplishments that, uh, that you've got. You've got world titles. You've got, is this nine national titles? And I'm uh, going through Wikipedia, and you and I talk. Yeah, this is probably yeah. not up to date. You've yeah. probably got more than that. Uh, I think I'm up at 15 now. Okay, 15. Uh, legitimate ones. And you compete in pretty much all the major um, uh, so, divisions and competitions, right? The oh, my USPSA, God, yeah. PSA, IPSIC. Uh, IDPA. Or, I mean, I shoot everything. So, yeah. so uh, for me personally, uh, this is – I started a new discipline in, uh, in 2019 in shooting. So, I've been my 17th shooting discipline in my life oh so what what's your new one what are you doing? damn shooting that damn long range stuff oh you're yeah. getting into the long range yeah, yeah right baby. over here i mean in jackson over here at um at shannon k's facility over here at the prs range the guy over there and he um he's developed this um they started this you know precision long range shooting series that they got and yeah i was going like well it can't be that hard you know it's just <laughs> slinging bullets and right so until it's just I a found little out, longer than what i'm doing now yeah until i found out i was going like what well, time we shooting out to a mile i was going like okay well the wind changes about six different directions between here and a mile <laughs> so what am i supposed to do a man and shoot at well that's a good wild ass guess kentucky yeah. windage <laughs> yeah no it's called wag 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 is called wild ass guess there you go i yeah, like you put that. a little wag in it you'll get it that's all <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've talked quite a bit about uh, precision rifle shooting on the show here. We've had uh, several guys on. Charlie Melton uh, being one of those. Um, don't know if you're familiar with Charlie. Or not. He's a former uh, Navy yep. SEAL. Yeah, I've heard him. Uh, oh, yeah. Charlie Mike Precision, so he's making some, uh, some really nice uh, rifles. He and Brad uh, Starr. Uh, Brad Starr is with Tejas Rifles, and he. Do, I don't know if you shot the Tejas round no, or not. It's yeah, but I know I, I know of it. Yeah, nice. so, so those guys my, are so my cycle. To they're go like through. world record, you know, trying to break records and stuff. So he's going out to like seven miles, and you know, right? That, that they're beyond belief kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's what they call a satellite shot from me. <laughs> 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 call, call, call Setcom and down in Tampa and go well, like, hey, hey, can you hit this target for well, me? Well, one time uh, uh, he did hit the uh, the awning of the tent that we were. <laughs> Yeah. shooting from i mean that's the pitch that that they're doing on those well, but. that's what we call a lucky shot so what do you uh what got you into the long range is it just something new that you're like hey i hadn't done this yet i need to need to conquer this right. one too yeah i mean when for me because i've shot all the major action disciplines in uh in my life and so so uh, just step back a little bit so i started in 83 uh and the reason why i started is somebody stuck a gun in my face one night Oh, really? Yeah. So I was like 19 years old. I was just some punk kid going to work. And and I thought that, you know, God, well, I should get a handgun. I mean, I've been hunting with shotgun and rifles with, as a teenager and right. my, since I was a kid. And Where are you first, from? Uh, I'm just south of Richmond, Virginia is okay. where I'm at. So I've lived there in southeast Virginia my whole life. I got you. So you're a country boy. Good. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, so... Uh, essentially, once somebody stuck a gun in my face when I was uh, 19, 20 years old, and uh, all my buddies at work were like, hey, you need to get a concealed carry handgun. I was going like, wow, I don't, I don't even own a handgun, but I got plenty of yeah, shotguns. I don't want them to put in my face either. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they, they encouraged me to go to an indoor range um, on Friday nights with them. So, um, yeah, very much like Royal Range where we are today mm -hmm. here in Nashville. So um, we went there, started competing, started shooting, you know, for bullet holes and, you know, and just, you know, just little, our own little test. And, right. And I got pretty good at it. And so time Because there probably was, wasn't really a, a competition circuit then. No, at, it was not. It was just a time. bunch of guys at work. I mean, yeah. we're, you know, we're just trying to. Kind of creating your yeah, own thing. Yeah. Whose ego is going to be bigger when we leave that, you know, who's going to buy dinner. <laughs> right. So, uh, so, yeah. So then I, um, 
I started whipping her asses every single <laughs> night, every Friday <laughs> night, and it's kind of like get sick of it. So I said, so one of the local guys said, hey, you should go try one of these action shooting um, events, which at the time was called Ipsic. And mm-hmm. I said, well, I think I'll, I'll pick it up and go watch, and maybe I'll go see it. And, of course, I can't watch nothing. i got to compete. I'm, my ego is not <laughs> yeah. way too big not to go compete. So All I right. went and competed, and, um, and, it, and I finished dead last. And I went, this sucks. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> going, like, maybe this ain't for me. Guess, yeah. guess where I'm going. I'm going to go buy a better gun and more ammo and go practice. And, and uh, yeah, by the middle of 85, I was competing – uh, on a regular basis, all, all up and down the East Coast. I mean, from basically from Mass all the way down to Florida. I mm-hmm. mean, I was in the car every weekend shooting somewhere. And then, I, you, know, you know, for me, I was always, I was into bass fishing one time. I mean, I was handling dogs and field trials, and mm-hmm. I was a big coon hunter, and I handled dogs and coon trails, you know, and I loved that, you know, and so oh, I was yeah. going like, I hate to lose. So um, so I figured I'd step my toes in the big arena, and then um, – yeah, I won my first big major in 1986, and I beat all the pros. And I was going like, wow, I beat this guy named Rob Latham. And at the time, right. it was from Jerry Barnhart and this guy named Rob Latham. I mean, um, so Michael Voigt. All these guys were legends yeah. Legends in the game. And so, yeah, that kind of got me got me started. Sure. I mean, you when know? you're taking those kind of guys down, you know, that caliber yeah. of shooter, it's yeah. definitely got to keep you in the game. You're like, hey, yeah, there's something going to like, this. They were going like, who in the hell is this country boy here? You know, <laughs> shit shooting squirrels out of trees and everything. So – so for me, so when, once that started, it was kind of like I got addicted, and it was like um, winning is addictive, isn't it? It is. It is. I yeah. mean, for me, it's. I. I, I mean, I, I. really, even though I'm 56 now, uh, I still. I'm still competitive in the shooting sports and everything I do, except yeah. this long range stupid shit I got. Well, do you just mile. started, so you know, give yourself right. some slack. I left my ego on the counter. Every time I go to range, it sucks to have to leave it there, yeah. but I have left it there, and I'm still learning. But uh, I think this year is going to be a, an upward turn in learning because it is probably the – I mean, you, a lot of people don't go out and punch holes and knock one single hole in the target at 100 yards away and then put another bullet behind it, another bullet right behind in, it. Yeah. But to do that at 1,000, find the right equipment, finding the right bullet, and find the right positioning – uh, these guys that do it who, uh, I mean, are highly competitive. I mean, it's, you see, my, it's my 17th different discipline, and I would say that PRS is probably the most competitive shooting sport I'd ever seen. Yeah, and, I, would, uh, I would think so, too, because there's, there's a lot more to it than just getting on the target, because oh. on some of these you're moving around and you're going from – Oh, from target to target, and you've got to, you know, yeah, it's all cycle it it's, in. A, it's a math game is all it is. Now, are you doing it uh, with a team or you know, with a team, partner? Team Todd. Team yeah, Todd, just team you? Team Todd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just you. Uh, yeah. And Some then, of those competitions, there's two. You know, you have a spotter, right. you don't have a shooter. That's the, that's the uh, designate mark, uh, marksman um, one that they got. Gotcha. And my wife, she um, she loves loves shooting, and um, she – she likes calculating that Kestrel for me, and she'll go, well, I think you ought to hold another tenth off that. I said, I know, but I'm not seeing that down range on the wind, wind call. She goes, well, I'm just telling you you need to hold a tenth. And when I missed it by a tenth, I was going, like, yeah, the old lady was right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she told you, right? <laughs> yeah, she told me twice, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah. yeah. That, that is it. That is it. The, uh, the long-range shooting is definitely something that uh, has, has piqued my interest here recently, too. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of getting into it. So what, uh, what are you using what? Um, actually, I'm, I'm running a Masterpiece Arms from Phil Cash, and uh, his company is out of Georgia. And about 60, probably 60% of the PRS shooters are using uh, the Masterpiece Arms um, guns. They're chassis-driven. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does some beautiful colors on them. They're super accurate. I'm running a, a 6BR in mine. Uh, also got a six um, six grade more that I'm run. Okay. Uh, so I'm running different calibers uh, out there, but. You know, the top guys that are doing it, they may be running three or four different calibers, mm-hmm. you know, depending on the match they go to. If they go to the west, they want a bigger bullet to buck the wind. Right. But if they're in the uh, east. and all depends on the conditions. It's all condition driven. It yeah. really is. And that's so. something that you're learning, I guess, as you go along. Now, did you take on a coach? Is somebody uh, helping you through this or are you just doing it all on your own? Well, I shot the first million rounds learning how to shoot. And taught, <laughs> nobody taught me how to do it. So I figured well, I know be, you know how to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, you know, my whole thing is that – uh yeah i need some help and so i'm heading out to um out to kansas city to with my buddy a guy named brian um brian sites and a guy named robert brantley who are two of the top um top couple nice. of pr shooters in the country and those dudes just do stuff i mean they're just i mean robert brantley's old louisiana boy i mean yeah. he goes you know shoots you know 
crocodiles in the head, you know, with a with a four pound <laughs> hammer, and you know, they go cook them on the grill and eat them up. Yeah. Oh yeah, Where but they, I mean, they just have a gift. I mean, there is a gift for shooting long range. There is, yeah. And Not everybody can do it. Right. Well, it's the same thing for action shooting. For me, if I, whether I'm shooting three gun or I'm shooting USPSA or I'm shooting IDPA, those disciplines. Uh, now, those are like, on. those are fast paced, you know, boom, 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 boom. You're, All you're moving driven. around. You do, yep. And, and this long range precision is, is patience. It right? is, but you still have a time. So yeah. you got, most of them you have 90 seconds to shoot eight, 10, or 12 shots, typically. Mm. That's a, the course. So you, you've got to know how to move, and it's all about. This game is all about positioning. If you miss a position and your scope's rattling around on the target down range at 750 yards away, and you're mm-hmm. going like, oh, I think I'm going to sling a bullet, well, you're not going to hit it. I mean, you're going to it's have to mental. sit in You've got to get in that position. You've got to find that stable platform in order to be able to send that bullet there. And then in the meantime, while you're doing all that, the conditions are changing at 400 yards away. Yeah. So you may have a three mile an hour wind coming from the right, and then at 700, you may have mirage coming, you know, bowling out of your face. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to know, know how to read all that. All those different, you got a different wind here than you do at you know 100 oh, yeah. versus the 400. Yeah. Yeah, I think my my last year I shot this match over in Jackson and. And I'm sitting there watching this. I'm looking down range, and I'm going like, "Dudes, I cannot see this target. I'm seeing all this. I got six. I got a six foot flood going on. I mean, we call it flood. I mean, we have uh, some mirage going on. Yeah. So, and the mirage is like six feet high, and it's like the targets are in between. It looked like something come off on some western movie, you know? <laughs> Clint Eastwood. Yeah, Clint Eastwood. Coming, planes, coming over know, the horizon. High, high plains drifter. You yeah, know, it's yeah. kind of like, oh, oh my God. It's kind of like, is that two horses? Or is that three? You know? Oh, just shoot in the middle. You'll catch one right. of them. Yeah, shoot the one and, in the middle. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so that's the um, the the thing with long range. So, yeah, it, it is a patient game. But reloading, um, you can get away with shooting Hornady ammo or Federal ammunition or so many other ammo that's loaded out there. Mm-hmm. But you better learn how to learn how to load. Yeah. And that's, you know, we have RCBS does all the trickler chargers and, you know, getting the right primers and getting the right cases. Now, is that is, something is you learned early on in your career is the reloading? I did. I did. I've been reloading my whole life. So. Okay. And so you know the ins and outs of what gun will like one certain bullet and one, you know, what powder likes, what primers and all those things. So yeah. it is an art. So, I mean, I've been loading. So I load about probably close to 100,000 rounds a year. Oh, wow. That's so a lot. And um, mainly pistol. And so so I can load a 1,000 rounds an hour of 9 millimeter. But you know how long it takes to load a hundred rounds of BR brass, you know, and trim it. You got to touch you it thirteen all the times. Stuff I mean, you got to do to it. Yeah, yeah God Almighty. I mean, you know. Ass. Yeah, so it's much easier just sticking a magazine, spit it out, and pick it up off the ground. So you know, so we got Art over here. Art hanging out with us. Oh, just just listening to the yeah. master. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Boom, about that. Boom Dog Sane has joined us, ladies and gentlemen, here at Royal Range USA, hosting us today for this interview. Royal uh, Art, Boom. thank you so much for doing that. We appreciate it. I'm glad to be here, and it's uh. It's National Canine Veterans Day, by the way. Just throwing oh, okay. that out there, since my nomenclature, you know, Boom Dog Saint. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, well, and, and I, uh, I look at it as it's, it's um it's Friday the thirteenth. Drink two beers tonight. Ah, at least that's the starting point. Yeah, starting that cancels point. all negativity out. Two right. beers. Right. Well, it can <laughs> back to back. Yeah, it takes care of what's going on now. The scare in the world. The Corona. Yeah. Drink corona. two Coronas. There you go. <laughs> you know, we were talking at lunch, and uh, you know, I told you I just got back from a. Uh, a cruise down in the Caribbean and uh, I mean there was no even thought nobody had a second thought about any coronavirus or anything and those you know I was telling you how dirty some of those places were that we went into and I mean if I didn't catch something there then uh, yeah, I'm not pro- worried about this crap right yeah. <laughs> yeah between that and the shot show crud you know oh if you can survive shot good. show yeah it's that's like 10 times worse than any, worse than any coronavirus I've ever thought about being absolutely well, I, I got it this year so I did mean did you get hit with it I don't know if I got the Corona or not. I may have had it, but I you mean, got I, drank, the shot show? I drank three Coronas in one night and woke up next morning sick as crap. You know? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so this is my, uh, this year of my 30th anniversary going to shot. And uh, I used to get sick every other year. So last yeah. year was great. This year, I mean, I was fine. I got back home and four days later, I'm going like, I'm good. Drink a Corona. Next, wait, next day, I'm going like, oh yeah, this is not good. So <laughs> a month later, yeah. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you got to travel and you got to do this demo. You got to do this competition. And oh, by the way, you got to load 300 rounds of BR brass, which is going to take a week and a half to do. <laughs> <laughs> that BR brass really kicking your ass, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got this new barrel 
God on my, it's, it's just aggravating me. It's kind of like I'm in tra- chases, trying to chase a bullet for that thing. And so um, I finally, finally found it. And, you know, so, um, so I actually got a big, uh, not a big match. Just got a match next weekend um, showing up at Frontline Defense in North Carolina. Okay. So they got a beautiful facility out there for, for PRS. And um, so Paul Smith out there runs that. So nice. Yeah. So it's a local club for me. And, so I'm going to do that, and I'll be. Um, I'm actually heading out west to um, do do a couple of events this year for PRS. So I'm go out there and sling some bolts in the west out in Wyoming. So oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Now, do you find time to hunt? Are you a hunter at all? Oh, I am. Okay. Yeah, I got to put meat in the refrigerator. That'd, that'd I mean, work. you know, yeah. I mean, you could starve to death come summertime. I'm telling, especially with this coronavirus and everybody's going and buying all the toilet paper and right. you know, cleaning out the grocery stores. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> if. All right, if you got like a deer in your yard, it's like tearing up your. Oh, we've got more than a deer in my yard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're in Tennessee. We've got deer everywhere. That's deer, right. Turkey. That's yeah. right. Yeah. No, I, I I love hunting. So for me, uh, I'm a big I'm a big hunter. So um, actually, I'm hooking up a hunt just um, with a PM uh, in South Africa. So I'm going there this Ooh, time next sweet. year to go me a. I want to get a kudu. I've always wanted to get a kudu. kudu. Yeah, I've been over it a couple of times, and I always want to get a nice one, and that's kind of on my list. He goes, hey, I. They taught, I can get you a good deal on an elephant. I said, really? What's the deal? 28 grand. He goes, you just got to get here. I said, you trade guns for, um, for elephant hunts? He goes, damn right. He goes, oh, I, said, shit. I said, I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of Sakato STI guns I can bring down. He goes, yeah, we'll, we'll swap them out. And he got to tell me about the hunt, which I've kind of known about it a little bit. But mm-hmm. when the guy comes up and says, you realize, you know, the long, I said, where's the longest shot you've ever taken on an elephant? He said, 22 yards. I said, get out of here. He's 22 yards. I said, the he goes, yeah, he goes, you're going to be 10, 12 yards away. I said, I said, man, I just had knee operation. I said, <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to be I able said, to run. I said, dude, would it, would it, these things fall on you or what? He goes, no, you just got to know where to hit them in, hit them in the brain. And I was going like, okay. I said, you know what? To tell you the truth, I said, I, I kind of like elephants. You know, they're kind of nice animals, you know. He goes, okay, if you don't want to do, do an elephant, let's do a giraffe with a handgun. I went, man. I, I like the handgun like gun thing, but yeah. he goes, I said, a giraffe? I said, dude, I mean, man, how's giraffe meat taste? He said, oh, it's not that good. I said, well, I don't want to kill one for it. Then. Right. I said, I really want a kudu because I've had kudu meat. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. we can go out and kill some plain, plains grain. Some buffalo, game stuff. kudu. Buffalo, yeah, shoot some, um, you know, um, you know, we need to go shoot some wax and monkeys, you know. So that's fine with shooting with the AR, he said. I said, okay, good. How many magazines do I need to bring? Many as you want. So. <laughs> yeah, Todd's got a lot of Africa stories. Some of them we probably yeah. don't need to get into here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, the, what part are you going to this, this time? Um, we're going to go south of Kruger, uh, just north of Durban. We're going to be south of Kruger Park. So uh, the PM there is a good buddy of mine, Neil, and he, is, um, he does a lot of big hunts. He's got about 300 miles that he hunts for outside of Kruger. Nice. And so, yeah, it's, you know, it's a beautiful place. I was over there. Anybody who had never been there, uh, I, I, you need to put down your bucket list. And if you just want to go see Kruger and see the, mm-hmm. you know, that part of the world, and I mean, you know, Anibia and Zimbabwe and the whole area up in there is just, it's pretty amazing. But, um, yeah, yeah I spent some time over there. My, my buddy Al Zeta, uh, yeah, we I got some stories to tell. So, yeah, I got, I got stuck a guy, stuck a gun in my face when I was over there. Do I tell a quick story? Yeah, yeah. Let's so another, got, another gun in the face yeah, story. I yeah. like these. This, this, is good. This, this, was, this one was almost, um, so when we went over there, this was my first trip over there in like 02. So we could carry handguns with us, but we were over there to sell machine guns to the South African um, military. So we we're over there and we got like 30, right, you know, full auto, you know, M4 rifles and other configurations in the, in the vehicle and this little bitty ship box car we we're riding around in <laughs> it's piled up in there so i'm driving and we were told that if you're on the main highways because the highways in south africa literally are just like they're pristine look like um the autobahn in germany oh really it's That's absolutely surprising. amazing but nobody's on it so you can you could ride down the road for 30 40 minutes and never see a car an hour you can not even see a car so we're going down the road and they said and, and so they said if you ever get pulled over on the interstate they're there to hijack you oh okay so now we're carrying guns because we're we're you know we're able to carry concealed concealed uh, handgun 
So I got one. My buddy Al's got one who's a gunsmith. He actually lives in Centerville, just south of yeah. here. He's just down the road. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, met Al a couple yeah. times. Yeah. Oh, God, that's a story to have. You used to even have him on <laughs> podcasts. So we're going down the road, and, and I'm driving, and, of course, I'm in the right-hand side of it, and, you know, and uh, on the right-hand side of the car, and Al is on the other side. And we come pulling up, and if you know Al, you gotta, you have to really appreciate him. He's an old mask guy. Uh, cranky as hell all the time, but good dude. And so we're going down, and all of a sudden I see these little bitty cones about about 10 inches off the ground right in the middle of the interstate. It looked like, you know, being on Interstate 40 out here. Yeah. And you would go like, what's going on? And there's this guy with an AK. <laughs> and standing he's standing there in the middle of the road. And he's like pointing at us to turn right now i'm running like 80 miles an hour now okay and i got a turn to go down this dirt road mm -hmm. and i'm going like dude we get ready to get hijacked and sudden al jumps up and says dude there's three dudes in the they're in the ditch with ak's and i said okay we got to figure out how to <laughs> get out of this real quick so i run up there and the guy keeps wagging you know just moving me to the into this hard pack road yeah he's wanting to get you on his roads yeah so he comes up i pull my gun out so we're gonna get in a gunfight right here al's gonna kill three of these guys i'm gonna kill we're gonna go to jail i'm gonna <laughs> want to die i mean this is crazy but all this happened like in a split second yeah and i've been to some really crazy places third world countries around the world and it wasn't uncommon but i feel like well, is this it I mean, this is my life i'm gonna, gonna die, die right here yeah. in, right here in south africa so I pulled a gun out, and I pulled up beside the guy, and Al's got his gun out, and he's looking at the dudes in the ditch with the AK, and this guy's screaming at me in, 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 uh, in, in, you know, in South African language that I didn't know. Yeah. And he says something to me, and I go, and, and, he, and he looks to me, and he was like kind of – he didn't know what to say. And I didn't know what the hell I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but I just put in gear and hauled ass. I mean, I just damn near run. And they're, so they're running out going like, what the hell just happened? We supposed to take these guys down. And they were like, and so we're booking down the road. So Al turns around in the passenger seat, which is now on the left-hand side, which where the driver is in the, you know, in the States. And he's got his gun hand out the window pointing back at him. All right. Okay. And he's going like, oh, got him. He said, let him point a gun on me. I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to blast him right here. And now I'm trying to go through all the gears in this little shitbox car we in, full of, <laughs> full of 30 machine guns in the back. Right. <laughs> so, um, so we ended up making it in Durban, and I had a couple of drinks that night. And we're going, like, we could have died. Yeah, you could so have. Then we met with one of, the, one of the locals there. He goes, yeah, you guys are lucky to get away from that one. You could have been dead. So they'll, just, they'll shoot you. That's oh, yeah, not they just a shoot. Bluff, all huh? it was was just basically – you know, uh, you know, carjacking is all yeah. it is. And they take all your money, basically put you back on the highway, buck naked with no shoes on, and you're going like, okay, I'm in Africa. Hopefully a lion will come out, you know. But a uh, true story. I mean, I, I was one of those wow. ones where you wish you could have had on film, you know. So Yeah, that's a yeah. story right there. I like that. <laughs> Especially with Al being there. No, oh, <laughs> I'm sure that made it 10 times more intense, right? Oh, oh God. <laughs> no, Al was my bud for God, 30 years. He just – Open up. He's seventy-five years old. He's opened up a new business um, called Schumer Barrel Company, mm. and they make some of the premier custom barrels for um, bullseye shooting and action shooting um, for handguns. And okay, so mainly, I didn't know he was getting into that. Oh yeah, he's got a brand new. I knew building. he was still tinkering, and you know he's yeah. got one of those big brains on him. He does a lot of engineering and stuff. Oh yeah, he makes he's all a, kinds of stuff. He's probably one of the one of the bullet head gun guys, old Vietnam vet that. The, that whole generation is dying out and yeah. it's um it's sad to kind of see that generation of individuals who have so much hand knowledge and firearms i mean because he's been in manufacturing for for you know ever since i've known him mm -hmm. and uh and, and a competitor too so some of the things he's developed that's been that he sold off to other major mm -hmm. manufacturers over the years has been been pretty cool so yeah yeah but he's a he is a he's done well he's definitely yeah done well so yeah. talk about uh your sponsors this year oh okay well um you know they kind of cycle around you know yeah, so yeah. for me it's kind of like you know as we're speaking now <laughs> yeah as we're speaking now i'm actually here doing a 2011 experience for um for sti staccato guns here staccato. at the royal Rams. yeah so um so the staccato line if you are familiar with the sti products over the years the new name is going to be called Staccato. So if you actually Google STI now, you're going to Google a sex, okay, infection okay. disease from the U.S. government. So STDs <laughs> went to STI. Is that what? Yeah. So my boss, is that how you got LinkedIn? Oh, yeah, my gosh. Yeah. So my boss goes, 
uh, I, I just can't have that. He's an old Duke grad, yeah. and uh, he's got pretty bad for business. <laughs> yeah, bad for <laughs> business. Shit. So he's going like, uh, well, you know, what the heck? We don't need that. No, that. So one thing led to another. So they came up with a staccato for something else in the line. And it sounds like something John Wayne would name his horse. Yeah, staccato. Yeah, yeah. Come here, yeah. staccato. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Rio Bravo. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah. All right. So yeah. <laughs> so the people. I mean, if you so if you watch John Wick. You know, mm-hmm. John Wick 3, so the combat the combat master. This is the combat master, the finest shooting gun in all the world. You know, and so... Uh, was that you? Yeah, that Were was you me. playing that, was that part? You're, yeah, that you're was in me. costume? I, I played that part. Yes, I did. It's <laughs> Great finest, accent. Great finest accent. Shooting gun. I you love. should be in four. Um, mm-hmm. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a Maybe. lot going on. Yeah, There's some openings? Uh, they've actually already filmed it. So. Oh, it's already done? Mm-hmm. I think it's already done. These I know a lot of them stopped production because of this stupid... Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah like, like, I knew like Mission Impossible. They stopped that in Italy. Yeah. So that's James done. Bond. Yeah. The well, I'm upset about Mulan the release being you know postponed. I was I was really looking for <laughs> Mulan, Mulan the Disney Mulan. movie. Yeah, come on. Yeah. It was it was yeah. scheduled the 27th, and now they put it off yeah. indefinitely. I, I bet you yeah. watched that Jungle Book one too that they did the live action Jungle the Book. The bear right? Baloo, who doesn't like it? <laughs> yeah. You know a, a blue singing in any, bear. In any iteration of Baloo, you got to love him. Absolutely. Right. Well, you know what I'm disappointed. He's about? pro two A. He is. He the, is. The bear. The bear is. Yes. Yeah. I just wish I would been disappointed and see like Frozen like be filmed right now. Frozen <laughs> like six, so I have to see it for another three years. You know. <laughs> Good point. Good my point. grandson, my you know, my granddaughter, they sit there and watch it over and over and over again. It's going like, hey, TV's broken. You know. Yeah. Okay. I saw we watch on an iPad. No, okay. So did they get the uh, the venereal disease and tie in with STI fixed? <laughs> Is that, yeah. Is that fit? okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's so. Um, we so, we do we chase squirrel, squirrels on this show, so it's all right. Okay. We get back on track eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Staccato uh, is going to be the new name of the company. Does that mean um, something? Yeah, it means um yeah twenty eleven yeah quality uh, handguns. It means badass yeah, handgun, right? Badass it's, handgun. That's what it yeah. means. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we got to figure out. We got to find another movie uh, to stick these things in. So you could have yeah. had Mulan, you know. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would have been something, you know, yeah. medieval, you know, China. Come on, with guns. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's not going to be any shortage of of movies for those things. Now, have you? I read somewhere. Have you done a movie? You been in a movie? Done something with a movie? Well, I was on a movie. I was on a movie. Uh, if you're a movie guy, oh okay? yeah. So I yeah. mean, I I mean I. You know, I, since we actually give, I've worked for a couple of gun companies over my lifetime uh, in, the, in the gun industry. So we give guns to the movie industry. Um, a guy named Sid Stembridge used to run a company called Stembridge Gun Rental. So I used to go over there and give them new model guns, and we would give them four or five guns and take them to dinner. And then I'd take hopefully them to a range. Hopefully they'll put it in your mo- hopefully, in their movie. Hopefully they're going like, yeah, hey, hey, you can really think of this new model, put it in there. Because, you know, if you can get your model gun in the in the industry yeah. in the movie i mean think about it, you get your sunglasses in a movie you get your watch in a movie yeah. you get you know whatever yeah. but <laughs> you, like you think think about the 29 smith okay the 44 magnum and all the dirty harry movies so <laughs> iconic you just, now iconic and I what's mean, the the one in the walking dead that rick grimes uses the big uh oh that's the uh was it, is that a Smith or a Colt that he uses? Oh, that's a Colt. Colt, yeah. Colt Python. Yeah, yeah, it's Colt, Colt Python. Python. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and it that just came back out, right? Yeah, it did. It did to that, come back out this year. From yeah, that so TV series, introduced, yeah. yeah. and introduced it to uh, at Chacho this year. Yes, they now, did. Yeah. So, so movies are, are a huge advertiser for the, the gun industry, even though they want to condemn us all the time, you know. Right. Yeah, they'll take our money, right. and they'll take our guns to put in a movie to kill all these people, and then they'll go, like, me, my movie's a bad, Todd. I mean, you know, guns are bad. We need to take away all your guns. And I was going, like, you're not taking away all my guns because you know how many, gun, you know many tractor trail loads of guns you're going <laughs> to need to get into my house and my place to be able to get rid of it. How many people you're going to need, yeah. Oh, God, I got so many. How many guns I got now? So, so what movie were you involved with? Oh, yeah, we never got to that. Yeah, yeah I was interested. Well, I mean, so on the movie, the uh, scene of Heat uh, and the bank robbery Satan, scene. What's one, one of the my best, favorite movies? The best gunfight oh, yeah. ever filmed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, so that, so I was there. It actually took about three days to film that. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that, when you, when you were there, so it was funny. I don't want to, I like, you know, I don't like to rag on anybody, but I'll, Dude, I'll just say, you can I'll do just that say here. some of the actors. This is a safe space. Okay. They're not um, listening. Trust me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. So, um, you know, when we were sitting Al Pacino. There, yeah. So Pacino, De Niro, 
um, Kilmer. Kilmer. So Kilmer actually went out and spent a lot of time really? practicing um, using the M4, doing all the reloads, doing everything he needs to do. And he was, you know, completely happy with hang with one one gun. This is my gun. I like it. It feels good. There's not not, not too many guns like it, but this is the only one I got. Yeah. You know. And he's one of those dudes. That, so the same thing with Denaro. You know, okay, I'm fine with this. So with Pacino, so my buddy Harry Lou, who actually was the armor on there, so the gun that he was using to shoot out, okay, as he would run and the gun would empty, he would throw it in a bucket behind a car and pick up another one because he refused to load it. Are you serious? So That's you're hilarious. seeing him running through the scene. So, um, you know, so Sizemore, you know, um, when he's running through. Big um, 2A guy. Yeah, big 2A guy. Yeah, too bad Tom he's gone. Sizemore. Yeah, Tom, too bad he's gone now, you know. Did he pass away? He passed away. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah, yeah. How long gone. ago did he pass away? God, he's been dead, yeah. I don't know, four or five years. Yeah. Or Has it been that long? Yeah. Yeah, maybe longer now. His legend still lives, though. Yeah, legend still He and I were in a, in a book together. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was a big fan of his, you know, over mm-hmm. the years. Kill so, Bill, yeah. Yeah, I think it was drug related, you know, oh. which, which is typical Hollywood, you know. And, I mean, he was a young dude. I mean, what a guy talented he was, you know. He was a yeah. super talented guy. Yeah, but yeah. So, 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 so Pacino. So Pacino would he would run along and you know with his hair flying through the air, look like he's all you know typical cop, you know <laughs> attitude. He always plays that great part, you know. Oh yeah. And he's going through there, and anytime we shoot, so they would go like, so the director goes cut. And so we're standing off to the side. So um, a couple of friends of mine were standing there. So he, he takes his gun. Now, this gun's like heated up because we have one scene after another. And he just he lays it on top of a plastic 55 gallon drum where oh. the barrel was. So, where does the bar- barrel's heat up? So, what does the barrel do? It melts. Just melts right through it. So, in the meantime, they're going like, oh, we got it. Okay, let's get ready to cut. You know, and they got all these, got all these kids out there, these college kids, and want to be, you know, TV people. Getting you know? in the industry. They're yeah. out there you know, picking all the brass up out of the road because you can't have the brass in the scene because you can't have it there prior to whatever the scene is going to be. So, continuity. They got to have continuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what they call it, continuity. I call it BS out there. <laughs> so, essentially, so, so he picks up. So he's got to go scrape, you know, all this plastic off the gun and then recharge all the guns and then put the 55-gallon drums. I mean, he literally just take and throw them on the ground and didn't care. But Val Kilmer, I'm going to tell you right now, that dude can load an M4 and he can hound that gun as good as anybody. He looked like he yeah. could uh, operate it pretty good in the movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was believable at least. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he did a great job in Tombstone. You know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah. of course. He's, yeah. he's always a guy that seems to get in character and take everything serious. Yeah. yeah. It's a shame that he's not in more movies because I was a big fan of his. Val Kilmer? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of his. Yeah, know. I heard he's hard to work with. Yeah, he's also got some sort of uh, diseases going on. He's yeah, yeah. With, you know, some oh, it does? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it just happened three or four years ago, yeah. I think. That's the reason why we probably – but I was a big fan of his. What if he's going to be in that new Top Gun movie? Top Gun I don't two. know. I, you know, yeah. I was hoping to see him in Mulan, but he's, you know, he's <laughs> not there. He's just not there. I think he was in Frozen. Yeah, I yeah. think he was yeah. too, you know, at least an extra. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. the snowman or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But, uh, so uh, what, what's your favorite STI? My favorite STI is the one I got on my side right here. I mean, it's uh, this oh, is. Do, do tell, do show. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yes, this is uh, one we actually built last year, and we've done away with the model. It's called a DVC-3 gun. Oh, yeah? Uh, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Be and careful because once you do it. Yeah, it wants, you know, you, you can be hooked. Yeah. So, um, oh, so wow. yeah, so that one's um, in 9mm and 38 TJ. And 38 TJ is uh, basically a rimless 38 Super cartridge I developed about about 25 years ago. Okay. And uh, so, but yeah, that gun is absolutely shoots. Um, I, I mean, I can hit a 10 inch plate with it, at, you know, 100 yards away. Uh, super accurate, super reliable. Uh, just, you know, a big fan of the product, you know. So the STI line, which has been around forever, those guys who've been building guns, I knew the original owner. Uh, actually, a, a guy named Chip McCormick, who is mm-hmm. a legend, yeah. a legend uh, that goes back in the early, late 70s, early 80s in shooting, got into the um, got into the Chip McCormick magazines and mm-hmm. started making single-stack magazines. And I own a, a few of those. Made a boatload. I mean, I don't know how many is I Is he have. still yeah. around? Chip is still around. Chip is a good friend of mine. Um, he lives just south of Austin, Texas, and um, good old Texas boy. Him and him and Willie Nelson, are good friends. Oh play. yeah, yeah. Him oh, and Willie, cool. good friends. They go play golf all the time together. Very nice. And uh, yeah, matter of fact, I was down there and 
uh, Jesse James mm-hmm. uh, is actually moved out of L.A. and he has got his facility uh, not too far from Chip. So, so is he um, still he's still doing the gun? Oh, heck making yeah. the guns. Oh okay. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because so, I heard much from them lately. Uh, yeah. So well, Jesse's on. Uh, Jesse he's as busy as can be. So I went to his place and a lot of custom and, uh, stuff. He yeah. Did. He uh, no no custom stupid stuff. <laughs> stupid <laughs> money. Stupid okay. money. Yeah. If if Jesse That's why I if, don't hear about it. If Jesse if it drives by his house on the UPS truck is worth another ten grand. <laughs> okay. So so Jesse uh, he called me up. I had a blue his phone rings and he's going Hey it's Jesse James how you doing Todd I went um like like okay right well who like is this you know the like, jesse james i said he goes oh it's jesse james chip mccormick gave me your number i went oh oh okay he goes how about you come down and see me uh, i said okay he goes i got this got this gun i'm working on i'm I'm interested in in some your um you know expertise and it's tell me what you think so i said okay cool so he built this built this ar 308 platform he got with this new stock he done and everything and I said, okay. I said, I got some business to take care of in, down in, you know, in Texas. So um, I said, maybe I'll come by and see you next month. No, I need you next week. I went, no, dude, you don't understand. I'm busy next week. Oh, okay, okay. I said, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll see you next month. So I, he gives me his address, and yeah. I go by this place, and it's like all, like, weeds and all covered over. I mean, like, you, you couldn't find it. It's incognito. It's right. incognito. And so I pull up. I went, it's got to be it. And all of a sudden, like, these eight dogs come running at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going like, well, shit, there's Jesse. There's Jesse right there. Walking this way. I said, I said, I really want to know if it's the real you or not. Put your hand down. I want to see your palm, dude. And he went, and it said, does says pay up, sucker, right in the middle of the palm. <laughs> does I'm really? like, you're the real one. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, but he was a super cool dude. That's cool. We talk guns. He's just a gun nut guy. I mean, it's not about the guns. I mean, it's not like me. It's not about the guns for me uh, in in competing. It's about you know, it's the friendships I make along the way, the yeah. people I know, you know, around the world. I mean, I got friends all over the planet. Yeah. And so Jesse's just another one now that we've become friends, and he texts with me, and I text with him about that. I'm going, hey, you really screwed up that gun. You should did this, and <laughs> ha ha ha. I got eighty grand for it. What do you get for yours? <laughs> and I'm going like, so one thing leads to another. I mean, he's just. I think we all in the gun world, we all just kind of we love. You know, we. You used Guns. It, it's a it's it's a tight knit community. Yeah, it, you know it's not, and there's all the political stuff that's going on now and, and you know <sighs> and the politics. I've been working Virginia politics for three and a half months. Oh man! And you know we were going to take all away. They're going to take our guns away, and we got to the point where I had never been in the political arena before in my life. But guess what? I spent three and a half months, eight to fourteen hours a day, seven days. My, well, my wife almost divorced me over it. Oh, and uh, but well, you know what? Thank you for doing that because that's what it takes. You know, it, it takes people with your kind of pull and recognition, you know, to jump in and and be heard. Well, you, you know, it was it was really just aggravated me a little bit because. You know, went there and talked to some really good senators and delegates who were, you know, ex seals and ex, you know, army guys who have really kind of bled over in that community, trying to make a difference in yeah. society. For you know, and they're real conservative, you know, and they are just awesome people. You know, art you deal with them here, coming through your place yeah, all, all the time. time. And, you know, and when it was, um, it was one of those guys, a Navy SEAL, uh, former Navy SEAL, who I actually ended up knowing um, when I got there, and we started chatting away and going like, "Oh, you know that guy? I know this guy? Yeah." You know, from Blackwater days when I used to work for Blackwater for about eight years. And one thing led to another. It was kind of like, I was going like, well, you're like a squared away dude. You're like a senator, but you're like a Navy SEAL, but you really are squared away. Yeah. And I was going like, so the Democrat senator who's next door to you who I just tried to talk to, dude, I mean, how do you work with these right. people? I, I mean, it's insane because their mentality level is so far left now. I mean, it's got to drive dudes like him crazy. Right. And the thing about it is, you know, what I – I mean, the whole thing about it is it's the lobbyists run this country. Lobbyists. Absolutely. Not politicians. Lobbyists. Okay. Whoever gives the most amount of money, whatever. So one thing led to another. He's going to talk. You, you got to keep stepping left and more to the middle in order to satisfy him. I said, why? Why can't we go the other way and let them come to us? And he looked at me. He goes, that's the first time anybody's ever said that to me. That's a damn good question. <laughs> And I was going like, okay, so why do we got to give in on this bill here? I said, what kind of check do I need to write you, okay, so I can tell you. Because they're not informed, Mm -hmm. okay. 
politicians are uninformed about firearms. So if, if I said, hey, you know, hey, you know what a staccato is? And they're going like, yeah, that's a knife, isn't it? It's a letter opener, right? <laughs> Stiletto. Like, it's an yes. STI. <laughs> right. Oh, no, dude, that's not a, no, that's a gun, uh, you know. So it's just uh, people are just uneducated. But you cannot talk to. And it couldn't be more evident than the, the politicians that we listen to day in and day out here, that how uneducated oh, yeah. they are. Well, they're and coming to your town. I'll tell everybody. I mean, I, I remember telling a friend of mine from um, from uh, Wyoming, and um, he's going like, well, yeah, see, you guys got all those laws coming. They're going to take all your guns away from you. I said, hey, you just wait. Mm-hmm. It's coming to a town near you. Mm-hmm. And I said, as long as Michael Bloomberg is alive and George Soros is alive and got money, they're going to try to take your guns away from you. And that's Absolutely. where it boils down to. And, uh, now, so you guys did a pretty good job in stymieing that, right? They didn't, we did. It didn't pass. We end up. Uh, so on January the 20th, which was a, um, I was actually at SHOT Show. I couldn't make it, but I had been working the phones and working nonstop. And was, so we had the big, uh, our lobby day. So we had, we had, so the media said it was 20 to 22,000 people showed up. Mm-hmm. That's what the governor was, you know, and Governor Ralph Northam is, he the governor. Northam, and the yeah. governor said only 20 to 22,000 people showed up down here. And so uh, the next day, <laughs> The Capitol Police said 50,000 plus come. But Governor Northam said the next day, you better take that down. So they took it off. And so when they took it off, so they had a independent government, um, um, you know, they, they, they like, at the, you know, like at the Capitol up in D.C., they mm-hmm. know how to pick people out. So it says 66,000 people showed up. 66,000. Now, 70% of the guys that came and gals that came, okay, they were carrying guns, mm-hmm. long guns. So, so you had, so, um, let's just say my wife's in law enforcement. Okay. So she had to work it. And so she's working outside the perimeter of this thing. Right. And it was kind of like, oh my God. So you had all these agencies. I mean, all these super secret people there blending flying or blending in, in yeah. going in. Oh my God. And Antifa's coming. They're knowing they've been tracking these guys all across the country, coming from Washington, coming from here, going to there. And so we had these other groups and it was like crazy. And she's like, I mean, I'm in shot. And I'm get, constantly getting texts because oh, all yeah. my buddies are all there. Yeah, and we're I mean, all keeping a pulse on it because oh, we yeah, what was going on. It was crazy. On, yeah. so, uh, and when it was all over and done with, it was kind of like all the cops going like, hey, these dudes were all cool. I, I mean, these guys and gals, they didn't do anything wrong. They weren't like I Antifa. Mean, yeah, we were there, you know. And so Antifa actually showed up. So I got a bunch of state troopers, um, guys I work with, and, you know, people in the state and other agencies I work with. And uh, I got to hear all the stories afterwards. So, like, about 25 Antifa dudes, they were all started kind of merging together. But all the guys in Intel, okay, and law enforcement, they knew who they were. Mm-hmm. And they all kind of saw them kind of bunching together, and they get ready to start some shit, you know. Next thing you know, they all kind of came down to them and was going like, hey, I just want to tell you, all we got to do is say the word Antifa, and there's 60,000 people here <laughs> are going to kill you. And they were all going like, yeah, they do got a lot of guns, don't they? Yeah, we're leaving. Yeah. Uh, they, true and they story. know how to use them, unlike us. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. So they, believe it or not, they're actually not anti-gun. Antifa's not. They're actually pro-gun. Really? Yeah, they are actually pro-gun. But, you know, they're getting paid to stir up problems, you know, wherever they go at. Their whole thing is that even though they're a bunch of white kids, privileged white kids living in the basement yeah. uh, they actually believe it or not um you know they are just getting paid to you know they hate to, white to middle-aged you know men kind of like you in art you know yeah. i'm not middle-aged you know i'm as black as can be you know you guys know i'm black yeah, you can tell yeah. by the yeah. uh, the accent he was doing from, yeah. uh, louisiana yeah. Yeah. oh so. i thought it was a south african accent <laughs> yeah <laughs> you did a good northam yeah yeah oh i did oh good yeah i had i got to talk to you him get you on snl time. yeah yeah, yeah no kidding line. yeah i know the three letter word uh, we're trying to figure out yeah no kidding so. <laughs> but it is it's um you know life is um you know full of stories so where are we at we well have, i know um, you got yeah. somewhere to be at three o'clock so i mean we can talk as long as you want if you need to go we'll wrap it up right here though but uh i enjoyed having you on thank you so much for taking oh, the yeah. time we got to get you back on because we yeah. love stories uh, you know the nra is and canceled yeah uh, unfortunately yeah we just got the news last night the nram um was what year is this that uh, 2020 
I mean, what, what, <laughs> how many is this the NRA? Oh, 100, oh 156 or yeah, something like a, that? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, a big annual, number. The annual yeah. meeting, yeah. And they shut it down due to this, uh, this made up virus. Yeah. This would be my, like my 28th or something when I would have been to this oh, year. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I really hate that. You know, I hate that for Nashville uh, because we love coming back here, drinking beer, you know, and listening to country music. Well, it's just now. a good, it's just a good, um, a way for, the 2A community to get together, you know, NRA yeah. or not. I right. Mean, Nashville's still open, so if you want to come, come. Right. <laughs> We're still here. Wow. Royal Range will host us. We'll, you know, we'll Absolutely. have Absolutely. We'll have a mini NRA. That's yeah. right. We'll have we a... We could have one here, all right. An right. RRA. Yeah. Have just a little rally, you know, we can, you know, get some food out front, and fellowship, right. and then we'll have more stories. That's right. Then yeah. we can get downtown afterwards. Right. And I'll tell you about the other side of South Africa. That um, yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> the east side versus the west side. Yeah. Cape Town. Oh, my God. I, I, or Joburg. Yeah. Oh, I've been to Joburg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's a crazy town. So, yeah, you yeah. go. Yeah. When you go pull up in a, you pull up in a, um, in a, um, uh, in like a, you know, a big mall area, you know, mm-hmm. you pull up in there and there's a girl with a, you know, an FAL sitting there you know, watching your car for 10 cents an hour. Oh, really? With an FAL. Just just so, hanging there in the parking lot. Yeah, so if you want your car secured, that's what happens you do in Joe Berg. You so got to tip them or something? That's or? it. Yeah, so I gave, we gave this, Al and I gave this girl $5. She didn't make but $5 a month. It was kind of like she wanted to kiss him. Yo, She's going like, hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute now. She's like, what else do I got to do for this? Yeah, that's <laughs> don't don't put Al. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell him with Al. Well, Todd, right. it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for, right, uh, for being on. I know the Leadheads are going to really enjoy this, and yeah. uh, we got to we got to have you back on. We need to talk more STI next time too. Yeah, and Keith Garcia. Yeah, we'll, yeah. I'll get you and right. Keith on yeah, together. Keith and I, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah, yeah it would be. Yeah, go, so. go listen to. Uh, I don't know if you listen to podcast or not, but I think it was the last episode that I posted that was his interview that we had on with him and um, uh, Desoma. Oh, from okay. POF. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, and Frank's a yeah, character Frank. too. I know Frank. Oh my God, did uh, you have him live? Did you have him here? No, no, it was at Shot Show. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah we were at Shot uh, Show, uh, but he he no oh. holds barred, baby. <laughs> oh, trust me, that POF crowd and Frank, um, what he has done to that company, he it's amazing. Uh, he's right beside one of my booths. I've been working for years at Shot Show, and he is a he's not a patriot. He's a super patriot. Yes, he really is. And That's a good way to put it. Yep, yeah, he is super patriot. All right, yep. hey, thank you, brother. Appreciate All right, guys. it. Leadheads, we'll be back with more from Royal Range USA. Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the backcountry or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. kel 22 caliber P-17 is Heath's go-to pistol for a good time. On the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The Keltec P-17. It's more bang for less buck. So maybe tonight, I gotta hit those craps tables, you know. Gotta do the craps yes. at least once while I'm here. All right, guys, so you, you probably guessed by that where I'm at. We are in Las Vegas at the 2020 SHOT Show. This is the final day. We're wrapping things up. Still bringing you awesome companies, awesome innovation here at the 2020 SHOT Show from the official lead quarters here at Buck Knives. And joining me now, it is our good buddy Casey Betzold of Fiocchi, not Fiocchi. What's up? The uh, newest sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast. Newest. Nice. Newest. That's right. You know, you guys sign on first of the year. and uh, Actually, you're, you're the, the, the second newest. See, I, See I, we signed up Twisted X. Twisted X is now the official footwear of the oh, Talking Lead Podcast. It's yeah. a good product. You know, have you met Brandon? No. We we've just you? seen the product. We've got to introduce product, you to, to Brandon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they make good, good shoes, good boots. Uh, so you guys uh, have been rocking. We're going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. Also join us, we got our good buddy George Ford from Nat Warfare. You bet. Now you may have heard him from one of our earlier uh, interviews. Yeah, we've been drifting around in and out. That's right. So you brought a buddy with you that we're going to introduce to the Leadhead Brigade. And uh, he's got some cool, innovative uh, products that we're going to talk about. 
Uh, introduce Iden to the Leadhead Brigade, George. I got uh, my good friend and uh, partner over here, Iden Hansen, sitting here representing Umarex today, and he's got some fun things to share with us now. They are fun. That's right. Welcome in, Iden. Thank you. Thank so you I, I saw you guys at Range Day, and I couldn't get to you because the line was so long. I wanted to uh, to check out uh, what you guys had going on there. So talk about what Umarex is all about. So Umarex is a uh, it's a company that uh, was born in Germany, and then as they came to the U.S., they actually started with track pistols, and then uh, went from there into uh, air guns, and uh, they make quite a few different things. They make uh, air guns now. Uh, and they make a lot, quite a few th different things. Air guns now, and they also you make... You can adjust that mic if okay, you need to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was all contorted here. Got <laughs> <laughs> a cramp. Can I get this massaged out? It was like somebody was standing on their head. Yeah, yeah. Into that thing. Yeah, I it was know. like his weird chicken neck. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it did look weird. <laughs> that's good. What's that's he doing? Long, as long as I, I was enjoying <laughs> watching it, though. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, so anyway, so we got. I like uh, to make my my guests feel uncomfortable. That's possible. perfect. Yeah. Mid chair. conversation with a gun in his hand. <laughs> right? Mid yeah. sentence. What was the point? In mid thought. Yeah. So uh, it's good because I have ADD. At least I won't get sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> Which is with speaking of squirrel, that's right. the thing that it's good for me because I see a squirrel, I can actually take it out with a gun. So uh, we make 17 caliber all the way to 50 caliber air guns. And, uh, That's amazing. The one you're holding in your hand right now is our newest one that came out. It's called the Air Saber. It shoots a 350 grain bolt uh, or arrow out of the center of it uh, at 450 feet per second. That's it. So it's, it's a bolt gun. So yeah, I'm, not, I'm not shooting pellets out of this. No, that one you're actually shooting arrows out of it, which is it's a lot like a crossbow except for without all the hassle. Without all the bow. Without all the bow part. <laughs> it's just yeah. the arrow. And it's, and it's faster. And it's faster. And it's faster. Okay. So if if I were a hunter, would this be archery season or would this be gun season? It would be gun season, and it falls under the same rules as crossbow if your state allows air guns. And so okay. there's about 10 states out there right now. They'd have to check their local rules to make sure that they allow air guns. In Texas, we were allowed to do it down there. So okay. we just go crazy with them. But uh run around it's a great place to test it and that's yeah. what i do is so the bolts it. that you're using is in this are they identical to what's used in a in a crossbow or are they specialized for this they're a little bit different they're almost a hybrid between a, an arrow and a crossbow bolt so they're they're made out of carbon fiber and that carbon fiber uh, piece has some strengthening pieces on the end then you put your normal broadhead on the end of it okay 100 gram broadhead or whatever you want to and then now how much more uh, pressure am i getting out of this versus a crossbow do you know that most crossbows are running somewhere around 410 400 to 420 they do have a crossbow that's getting ready to come out at 450 i can just tell you it's a freaking yard sale <laughs> okay. if, when that thing goes wrong <laughs> from experience okay yeah, and even if you make your own mistake and don't put the bolt in there or it falls off or something and you dry fire it, it's a mess. Like, you just cash yeah. the whole thing. This thing here, if you if you dry fire it, it just makes a sound, scares off whatever you're shooting at. And then gotcha. You just feel like an idiot. <laughs> it's <So>. a bonehead. <laughs> Very cool. So is this the uh, the showpiece for, for the 2020 SHOT Show that you brought? There's that one, and then the uh, there's also the Javelin, which is that one's baby brother, and it shoots uh, 330... Uh, feet per second and about a 170 grain arrow that runs out of it and it runs on co2 so good for okay. prepperville if you're a prepper this is a great gun here because you get 30 shots out of it you can hand pump the thing if you need to it comes with the probe and the adapter to charge the end of it okay um, the, the hand pump is like a bicycle pump on steroids which is yeah. just it's a beast. You got, you got to have some weight behind it to you get got, it up over the 3,000 uh, yeah. PSI. But once you get it there at 3625, I mean, that's, yeah. this thing's a rocket. Yeah. Uh, and you get about 30 shots out, you said? You get about 30 shots out. About, okay, I that's usually not bad. I refill. If you're going to be hand pumping, I would probably refill after about three shots. So okay. you don't have to do the 175 or 80 <laughs> pumps. Uh, it's a lot. Reload frequently. It's a workout. Yeah. The, the what? Reload your air frequently yeah reload your air frequently so if you're yeah. doing that you can shoot one or two or three shots the good thing too is if you go to reload with the crossbow uh, it takes a long time to do the reload and yeah. if you're in a tree stand ain't happening you know i mean you, it is happening but it's not gonna be that simple sure with this thing here you just shove another arrow in it jack it back put it back forward and uh you're good to go pull the trigger it's got a really nice trigger in it too very good and what is this called Air Saber. The, the Air Saber. Umarex Air Saber. Umarex. And what does Umarex mean? Is that got a meaning to it? 
Or did you just come up with a cool acronym or something? No, I just think that's a name that they came up with. I couldn't accurately answer that question. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Means fighting an arrow gun. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So. I like that. We'll go with that. Yeah, it, it works. So that's good, though. Check that one out. And then, again, the uh, other one. You can go to Umarex USA. Yeah. And it's got Picatinny Dot rails com. on here, too, so you can put lights and bipods, bipods and Qu- quivers, quiver. and quivers yeah. and all whatever your, your heart desires. You get throw yep. on there. And tactical, so the, snatical the, pack. The retail on this, on the uh, Jab one is, I, I mean, the Sabre is 370. 370 on the retail on this, and it oh, comes with the scope. Price. So, if oh, you, okay. yeah, if you, if you get the scope and you go, I don't like it, but it doesn't matter. You can just pull it out of the box. As long, if you have any PCP right now, you can take this gun out of the box, plug it in, charge the thing up. If you already currently earn the PCP setup and the equipment, yeah. you can charge it right up and go hunting with it right away. Right out of the box. But there have a go. good backstop. Buy a, buy a crossbow, crossbow backstop on it. Okay. When the arrow do you, misses, do you pre-sight them in? We don't pre-sight them in, but you okay. got to mount up your own on there. I would do, if, if you have an opportunity, I would try to bore sight as close as you can. Start real close, about 10 yards out, and start putting them in there. Once you get it dialed in, it'll stretch. I'm My... My best group so far at 100 is three inches. Nice. Which is not bad for for an arrow. I mean, that's a kill shot, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So uh, your website, is it umarex.com, I would assume? Umarexusa.com. Who is it? Umarexusa.com. Okay, so you throw the USA in there, yep. .com, and they can go and they can check this out, check out your other offerings. Talk about your pellet guns. So the, the 50 cal, which everyone's waiting for, it's like the... Uh, the Sasquatch of the bunch, you know, everyone's like, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. We've had it on TV. We t- took a lot of animals with it on TV, and um, it's ethical. It's, it's taken two Cape, Cape Buffaloes. Oh, really? It has a 50 caliber. Oh, so that's cool. First time it took two shots. Second time it took one shot. And uh, Steve Scott shot those, but absolutely how, amazing. How many shots do you get on that one? That one you get two shots uh, in per magazine, but it gets three full power shots. And then the fourth shot you get out of the gun is about a 90 to 95% shot Gotcha. Uh, from there, which is really good. The, the good. the best thing is, is there's no other guns out there you get that follow-up with, with that size, that caliber, and that power. It's like 700 foot-pounds of energy. Wow. It'll pass all the way through an American bison. Jeez. That's some power. You've done it. You've done it. So yeah. you know. I was going to say, you probably know that because you've done it. Yeah, so it'll it'll pass through on those things. Most animals, deer size, it'll pass all the way through. And what's the price point on the 50 cal? 50 cal runs 799 uh, without an optic. Uh, this is 370, and the uh, for the air saber. The bolt, the air saber. Yeah, yeah and the air javelin is a, is 169. Air javelin. Okay. The air javelin's a smaller one, and you buy the replaceable tanks. That's kind of like the Tom Sawyer, the Huck Finn gun. Uh-huh. You just take that thing and put a little straw in your mouth and a hat on and go outside <laughs> and just look for rabbits and whatever. Rabbits and squirrels. Raccoons, neighbor's yeah. cat. Whatever's <laughs> legal in, whatever's legal in your That's state. Tight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. But I'm assuming that Fioki hasn't come out with the bolt ammunition yet. No, we could do it. Probably, right? Who knows? Yeah. Might be coming out. Like two different uh, genres there yeah yeah it's different this is cool man but we like fioki it's it's got a good look to it we like fioki too i like i like fioki Fioki's uh, got some great ammo so you guys are here at shock show uh casey this your this is your first shot show as fioki yeah I'm so starting how's to it going for you shows with different companies different companies you're saying how many companies you can you can I don't represent know if that's a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> um how was it? Is that the question? Shot show. Yeah. So well, we're Friday, so we pretty much know at this point. You survived. Yeah. I I was down a day sick. That's happened never before in twelve years of coming to shot show. So that really was, that was interesting. That was your first one, huh? Thought I was gonna die, and then got over made, it. Made it through it. Good deal. Missed today, but the show was uh, show was fa- fabulous for us. So came to came to shot show this year and and had a lot to cover. Um, a lot of changes in the company in the last year mm-hmm. and um you know first first year that the booth you know it doesn't have multiple people with the last name fioki work in the booth mm-hmm. so it's it was kind of a, another you know, first there's kind of a nostalgia you know sadness around that actually for a lot of the folks that came by that that are have been longtime friends of the fiokis i mean george right. george known the fiokis for for years and years also so um you know, good, good people, good family have set up a great brand, um, and it's it's kind of a 
you know, a, an honorable moment to take on kind of a big job um, with a great brand and go take it to the next level. So yeah. we didn't take it lightly and we put a lot of time and effort and planning into it and we had a, a an amazing week, actually. Great. Fantastic week. Good deal. Um, now, were you all, uh, sorry to cut you out, were you, uh, were you unveiling anything new here? Yeah, we... Um, we did it out at Range Day first last Sunday, and and um, at the Try and Buy event with the Alliance Group, we right. sponsored that event as one of the top sponsors. We co-sponsored that um, at the Medal of Honor level, and we uh, we launched the Blue Guardian line out there, which mm-hmm. was the lead-free, tip-to-tail, um, frangible uh, training rounds, uh, reduced ricochet hollow points, and solid copper hollow points. Yeah, and those things were amazing. The the frangible, I mean, just walk right up to the target shooting that and you get no spray or anything oh yeah yeah we uh you walk right up on the steel and pull the trigger and and one of the things that you know it's it's not that it's not been done before because people utilize lead free primers on the training side but traditionally that lead free primers or heavy metal free primers aren't utilized on the duty ammo side Mm -hmm. because there's a there's been a stigma um out there that it's not as reliable as lead stiff standard primers but um, what most people don't know about Fiocchi is that for the last 10 years they've been running a NATO, the only NATO certified heavy metal free primer in the world. There's 10 years of data out there. Oh, interesting. It's as reliable, if not more than reliable, than a lead stiff primer, and we're running with it because the world's going lead free, so let's go after it. Now, is that going to be uh, available to the commercial market as well? Yeah, it will be. It's a mid-year product. Um, products are developed for the first portion of the launch, and we'll have um, we have a build plan over the next eighteen months to bring out on the hunting side, the self-defense side, the the hog hunting side. Gotcha. Um, the LE side, um, and it's you know we're we're a few months away based on packaging and final naming of of products and categories. So it's it's the painful portion where sure. you design the box to make it look pretty and get the names right and yeah. make sure you're not stepping on anybody. Well, I'm sure the lead heads so. would, uh, would be happy to help you out with the naming. Uh, they can send yeah. out suggestions. Send them in. Send suggestions. Them in. Talkingletgmail.com. Put uh, name suggestions for Fioki's new ammo. Send them in. I'll send them to Casey. If we pick one, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out how to get them something special. So. They get a box of that ammo, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> say Easy. a free box of ammo. With we'll it. send them a uh, Put their Umarex, picture on it. Umarex Autographed Air by Bolt Casey. Gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put their put their photograph on it. <laughs> yeah, put their picture on it. Put their picture on it. That'd Set be funny. Them an Umarex air gun that they can't shoot the ammo with. Right. <laughs> yeah, but they could go out and hunt. They like could. Huck Finn and Tom they Sawyer. Could. Yeah, they could. We could hook him up with the knife guy, and he could teach him how to throw it. That's that that's would be true. fun. I should have asked him if he could throw a bullet through. If he's ever thrown a bullet to see if he could. Anyway. <laughs> It must be Friday. <laughs> the stuff he's coming up with now. Right? My brain is cooked. <laughs> it's fried. It is fried. So uh, they can go check this out at uh, your website. FiocchiUSA.com. Another USA. There you go. FiocchiUSA.com. And the new website uh, just went live while we've been here, actually, the okay. uh, day we got here. So um, website, complete rework, um, brand and logo evolution. Uh, from what they've seen, it'll still look very familiar, but it's 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 had some adjustment and some okay. some some love. A little updated. It looks little, good. A little yeah. updated website looks amazing. Modernized. It looks um, it looks real good. I think it'll be very recognizable. Yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. We nothing cool. but positive feedback from customers and and uh, big growth opportunities and lots of new products and you know it, there's some there's some stuff going on at Fioki that you know with the drive of of the shift of the ownership approach that is um it's just really cool for the market frankly yeah so. well, very good man congratulations on uh a successful shot show for for you and, and fioki your first year absolutely Thank and you. and umarex did we talk about all your new stuff is there anything else that we need to talk about well, i think we pretty much covered that we got a new pump coming out okay let's so talk you, about you that real pump, quick. if you need to pump up your air guns like air, one of the biggest challenges with air guns is the fact that if you don't have a pump you can't pump it up to 3,000 or 4,500 PSI. Yeah. So we got a new pump coming out, and uh, you have to check it out on our website. But it's coming out, so I think it's the retail price is around 699 Okay. And you can actually plug it into your car battery and charge up while you're out in the field, which is huge. Oh, that's cool. So you can pump uh, the gun up, or you can probably sm- pump a real small bottle in there, which will give you plenty of hunting time. So Yeah, very cool. That's good. That'd be convenient. Portable. George, you got anything to say over there? You're, you're quiet. I'm good. I came in. I talked my piece the other day. I just kind of <laughs> just sitting here letting these guys Did you uh, say anything good? have their minute, you know. Did you say anything good the other day when you were in here? No. He doesn't no, remember what yeah. he said. 
Nothing. Yeah, you might have left. He it was all just on autopilot. Yeah, it was all horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were at try and buy. Did we didn't talk about that? What do you guys all talk about that already? About try and buy? Yeah. Yeah, we've been talking about it. Yeah. Everybody that was there, we mentioned it. And how, about how was it for you? For me, it was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's oh, always yeah. good for me. So I, that's where I get the opportunity to. I mean, unlike here, I get the opportunity to walk around and actually talk with people and Not get hands on with the yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Not be nailed down yeah yeah and and then it sets up for the interviews for this week so i actually get exposure to the products that way and then uh, i'm better apt to talk about them during our interviews during the week so awesome yeah it's a it's a huge event i it really a good enjoy event it look this forward year. to it yeah, good event for fioki good event for the alliance good event for the crew that was out there so far a lot of good feedback on it um i've had a chance to follow up with some folks in the suite in the evenings and and uh, heard from most of the top sponsors it was a good deal great deal for fioki because we got to show the product and people got to come through and learn about it yeah yeah and that and that was amazing because i got to try that out the the frangible ammo and yeah awesome yeah that was really good there uh, speaking of twisted x look who just walked in <laughs> <laughs> we got brandon in the house nice all right, guys. So one more time, UmerX's website, UmerXUSA.com. That is correct. You're on the Instagrams. You're on the Facebooks. We're on the Facebooks. You can check it all out. All right. Do you guys have like a – is there like competition shooting with air guns? Is, is there anything like – does yet. that exist? Oh, yeah, well, well, yes, not with the arrow guns yet, but we do – With a, the pellets? Yeah, we do bench rest, long range shooting. It's an Olympic with the, event. Yeah. Let's just start that now. Yeah. And, and, and we we'll actually make the Olympic guns. Yeah, there you go. So, oh, for the, yeah, the air rifles. The triathlons, or what are they called? The biathletes. Biathletes, yeah. And so they have air rifle events that they have in the Olympics, and we actually make them. There's and those are yours. Camera lie. Oh, cool. Yeah, I bet those so are expensive, aren't they? They're cheap. They give them away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, do it for, you do it for America. America. You America, do it for America, right? You do it for America. But they, they do have long-range competitions you can get into if you want to travel around the country. Yeah. The bench rest competitions, and it's uh, it's really exciting going out there and giving it a done. I did my first one here this about, what, three months ago yeah, or four two. months ago. Yeah. yeah. Made it in the finals with our product, so. Oh, cool. Was, Congratulations. Uh, good. Is that your shooting shirt there? Is that your team shirt? It's kind of my team, team shirt. Yeah, it's a team Umarex shirt. Yeah, it's this sharp. Shirt. I like it. And I can bass fish in it, too. <laughs> you can bass fish in it. bass fish too. Is it UV protected? It's UV. Well, I don't know UX. if it's UV. UX protected. UX. I don't UVX. tan. I just get freckles. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to be back with more from the 2020 SHOT Show here from the official headquarters of Buck Knives. Okay, Leadheads, that does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Go and show our sponsors some love. Keltec Weapons at keltecweapons.com. Fioki Ammo. Check them out, fiokiusa.com. Buck Knives. Bucknives.com. And you guys, you know, you know the website. You can find them. You just Google them. Mission First Tactical. Smith & Bradley Watches. Century Arms. we got the AK Corner coming up, and it's going to be an awesome AK Corner. If you have questions, you got Jack Wagon nominations, you got Leadhead Brigade Heroes, uh, or you just got any kind of comments at all that you want to uh, send my way, email's the best way, talkinglead at gmail.com, and then just put in the subject, whatever it may be. And as, as people know that, that send me emails or contact me on social media, I'm really good about getting back with you. So that does it, guys. Until next episode, as always, Leadheads, keep your loved ones close and your firearms closer. Don't you